I'm uh, Lynn Postovit, and I, I am the Sewin Baldwin uh, Chair in Ovarian Cancer Research and the Dr. Anthony Nujame uh, Legacy uh, Oncology Chair and the Alberta Innovates Health Solutions Translational Health Chair in Cancer. Our research program is really trying to ask the questions um, of how cancer cells, and in particular breast cancer cells and ovarian cancer cells, um, become more aggressive. So how they're able to evade therapies that we throw at them, so like chemotherapy, therapy and radiation therapy. The big problem with ovarian cancer is that we can't detect it early. And so we're, we have a cancer now where we have uh, over 50% of the women who get the cancer dying and that's just really unacceptable. And the reason is because we detect it later. So it's similar to other cancers when we detect it late. Pancreatic cancer for example. And so what we have to be able to do is detect this early on, so we catch it at a stage one where it's localized, we can come in, remove it, and, and more women will survive. We're uh, addressing this question by looking at the topic of what we call plasticity. And plasticity is uh, almost like a stem cell-like feature, so it's the ability to adapt to uh, the surroundings, so kind of like a chameleon. We think of a little chameleon changing um, in response to the environment to change its color and then evade being eaten. Um, in the case of cancer, we have a, a situation where these cancer cells are um, co-opting stem cell-like features so that they can change in response to their environment, live in different places like the lung, spread, and evade therapy. We use stem cell models, so normal stem cell models, to get at embryonic factors, so proteins that allow these stem cells to normally be like stem cells, but that are abnormally expressed in cancer. And so the idea would be to come in and target these particular um, agents um, to help prevent that adaptation um, resistance to therapy and spread. At the same time, a lot of these proteins are very embryonic and so they tend to be silenced very early in development, so they're not in an adult. Um, and that's important because when we think of a cancer and trying to detect it early, we want to get proteins or markers that aren't expressed throughout the body that are very specific for that cancer. And so we're, we're thinking that these embryonic proteins might be great candidates for, for that because they would be specific for the cancer. So we're working with others in the province to develop technologies to be able to get to that needle in the haystack to detect those proteins um, in blood, for example, early on so that we can detect cancers earlier. And this is particularly important for ovarian cancer where we just don't have a great method right now to do that. The AIHS Translational Health Chair in Cancer is truly uh, enabling. It will enable us to do things that we can't do within our current funding climate. And this tends to be some of the more high risk questions. So questions that we're coming up with based on, of course, literature and our, our results, but that might take years to finally get funded in um, some of the other, other systems that, that we use to be able to run our lab. Um, so it's truly enabling. It's not only enabling to allow us to do that, um, but then also to provide us with some of the state of the art platforms that, you know, to be honest, are, are quite expensive. So, you know, getting at the actual patient tissues and testing new drugs and trying to find new biomarkers with them. Um, you just can't do that unless you have these types of um, opportunities. My hope is to, to find things that will improve the lives of people afflicted with cancer. And so I've been kind of lucky in my career so far to have that happen um, once where work has already moved into clinical trials from ben bench top all the way through. You know, if you can find something that helps even a hundred people that's amazing. And so, you know, sometimes we, we think so large, um, it becomes overwhelming, but um, particularly with a disease like ovarian cancer, um, bringing that, that uh, percentage of people who survive, you know, up, up to 80%, closer to breast cancer in the next 10 years, that would be my hope.